Mkhlekaz, I'm honored to have you here. The MMC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mkini. Dr. Mkini. Oh, come on, make sure. Dr. Mkini. Dr. Mkini. Uh, PhD. Chemical engineering. Yeah, science so you're pretty, you're pretty smart. If you call that. If oh. You, so what is smart? I don't know. PhD. Yeah, it's the effort. Studying. So I'm honored to have you here. I've got a, I've got a couple of questions for you because I know we have limited time, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but I'm honored to have you here. And more especially, I need to say this on camera. I'm honored to have a, a member of the EFF here. There are a lot of EFF supporters that misunderstand my view on politics and how I criticize and, and my views. And they almost feel like there's a hostility which doesn't actually exist. Because I think... Anguazm. Are you criticizing EFF? Why? Huh? Why are you criticizing EFF? Because I don't like the red overalls. You must get blue overalls. Yay. Everyone knows we wear blue overalls. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> because we have limited time, I'm just going to go straight so. into the questions without going into your background. And I'm hoping if ever we get a chance again, we can speak about at your leisure, uh, your upbringing, some of your the things you've seen, your journey to where yeah. you are today. Okay. Uh, but we're not going to speak about that today. If you'll humor me, we'll just hit. What is an MMC? Who are you? Where do you sit? Especially for the ordinary South African that doesn't understand these things and only knows members of parliament. Oh, okay. The the MMC is a member of the mayoral committee. And he's like a mini minister. Okay. You've got a minister national. Then yes. You've got an M M MEC in the province. Then in the uh, regional level. You have an MMC. Yeah. So a mayor is elected, and then the mayor invites uh, people to come and serve with yeah. him in different departments. So myself, I am. Um, uh, I was un invited through the Economic Freedom Fighters to come and be an MMC uh, of public safety to do oversight yeah. and provide leadership and strategic direction of the, of the department. Why, why did you leave National Assembly? We'd like to think that's the pinnacle. No one would ever, it almost looks like a demotion. No, no, it's not actually. I yeah. uh, remember there in the National Assembly, it's more of a, we are in, in the opposition. Um, we're just members of the portfolio committee. Yeah. But at that level, remember that, did you know that JMPD has got the largest uh, police force in the entire continent? The JMPD, JMPD Johannesburg Metro Police Department, yes. has got the largest police force. Yes, yeah, compared to the other. The only times okay. we see them is when they're stopping us and harassing us on the roads, which is annoying. But the problem is that do you uh, is your is your car fine? Uh, like do it you, is. Yeah, yeah. Do you have, uh, maybe you have lots of tickets? <laughs> That's <laughs> a conversation they, they, they for another you. day. <laughs> they will stop you to do their uh, checks because they do traffic management, by yeah. enforcement, and also crime prevention and combating. That is their thing. Thank you for that, by the way. I, I didn't know that. JMPD so, officially has the largest police force yeah, on the uh, African continent. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite, it's a police force on its own, so it's quite a lot. So, um, And also, I, I have to come in and really take this opportunity to lead that department because um, I've done, I've interacted a lot with the JMPD and also EMS and Disaster because I've been a national organizer of the EFF yeah. for the longest of time. Um, national organizer, we do rallies, uh, we interact with the police, and yeah. I mean, being there and seeing what is happening, interacting with the community, the community issues, you know. Yeah, so so I had to, you know, uh, 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 come in and really assist in terms of doing the the, 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 the work. There's more, there's more operational work involved in what you're doing now than sitting in parliament. Yeah, look, there, there's quite a lot, because remember now, as an MMC, you are... Uh, looking at the budget, you, you're coming in because, um, you know, you you come and implement the yeah. manifesto of the buffet party. So in the EFF, uh, there is a very large uh, um, uh, actions in terms of what we need to uh, implement in terms of crime. We have to fight crime with fire by fire with everything we have. Fire uh, by fire? Yes, in every means possible. Every, every means possible. Every means possible. We have to. That do sounds it. dangerous. You know that, right? It's not dangerous at all. Just saying that you must use everything. Like you can use it, artificial intelligence. Okay. And then, and after that, um, if the, if the, the the person, because like these thugs currently, they they have the audacity to kill police. 
and they yeah. take out firearm. And according to, you know, uh, there is an allowance that if uh, you have a, a thug or criminal that is pointing gun at a police officer, mm. you are able to take the person out, shoot to kill. You can do that. Um, so we had to do that and also we have to ensure that we use the, the, the technology, artificial intelligence. Hence now we, we uh, um, um, partnered or we've signed an SLA with Vumacam. Yeah. We had an access of uh, 75,000, uh, 7,500 cameras. Um, around, around the city? Yeah, city, Sentin, Rosebank, Bramley, uh, some in Hillbrook, but they are squatted everywhere. There's a, a map on them. But they got a lot of large contingency of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of cameras with artificial intelligence. So they can, These are currently can, implemented? Yeah. I think it's there. Even when the premier said, hey, we're going to roll out 6,000, you know, no, it's there, you know. <laughs> the, the cameras are there. You just have to get in the feed. We've just got a feed. Yeah. He's saying that because we've got an already operating IIOC, we call it an Integrated Intelligent Operation Center that is operating there. Yeah. So we, we spoke to them because the CT had 575 cameras, of which 50% 50, 50 of them, they were not working due to vandalism, due to load shedding, and, and, and. And yeah. I said, hey, and then some of them are still operating analog. So there is a contract out there just to really upgrade the, the software. Software was updated 10 years ago. Sure. So the cameras are there, but they're not currently being used. Currently, they've been there. Look, the, 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 when I arrived at the office, we had cameras that were there, yeah. 575 old. And 50% of them, they were not working due sure. to vandalism and all of that. And also, you, we did not have an effective response system. That's why you see radio, you, 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 you see videos, people being chokeholded sure. in... Yeah, in, in Hillbrae, right? because there was no efficient response. We uh, see the video, but there's nothing there, there's happening There's nothing there happening after. on that. I yeah. think now you haven't seen it for a very long time. It's, it's a bit quiet because we had to sign a contract to upgrade that, that, that system. Sure. And then second, because it hasn't been upgraded for the past 10 years. And secondly, we said because we still have to see other areas, we've approached Vumakem because Vumakem has been on the field for a very long time. We said, look, we'll, can we please get a feed because we are dark in other areas? Yeah. Uh, let's get your feet so that we have a wider, you know, eye sure. everywhere, you know. Then they, they actually plugged in on us, and then I had to, we, then through uh, the uh, the initiative, you know, us being there, the, mm -hmm. the economic front of fighters deployed there. Because I know the organization has been one of the things that they said I must do when I come in is to fight crime, my man. Yeah. You have to fight crime, and you need to launch a tactical reaction unit. I do react and ensure that it, it responds very quickly and fight crime, which is what we did in November. Sure. And that unit is, is doing very well. It's called the JMPD Tactical Reaction Unit, JMPD True. It's uh, the guys are they don't they're, they're not wearing any clothes. They're not wearing clothes. No, no. Uh, they're not wearing uniform. <laughs> uniform. <laughs> <laughs> no clothes. <laughs> they're not wearing any uniform. No, I've got a they couple. Are, of, I've got a couple of you. questions before we go on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Firstly, what is the difference between JMPD mm. uh, and SEPs for yeah. people that don't know? Okay. And then secondly, the concerns around violation of privacy and being a surveillance state sure. with all these cameras. Look, we, we, the, the JMPD is derived under the, the, the SEPs Act. Okay. okay. We are, it's under. SEPs here, under. Okay. It's SEPs here and it's JMPD at the sure. bottom, like all the metropolis, right? And... We can arrest, all right, but we can't detain, we can't detain and prosecute and all those things. Oh, there's certain things we you are, cannot do. There's, there's certain a limitation. things you can't do. There's a limitation. Is a JMPD like UNES and SEPS is a doctor, as an example? I and you ask it. Like, okay. Like, maybe, maybe, like the nurse so. can do a lot. You can do a lot, but it's limited. limited. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, let's put it that way. Okay. Because we... we we can arrest a jaywalking person, of which I, I, I saw another guy getting drunk, they drink next to me. I said, but arrest this guy drinking, like, drinking in public, you know? Yeah. said, but no, MMC, if we take these guys and arrest him, mm. um, um, you know, SEPS looks at it as a useless violation, sure. you know? But for us, as, the, as a JMP, we, we look at it very serious. We must, there's a concept called a raid from the, the, the New York uh, Police Department. Yeah. Uh, when they were having a problem with crime there, uh, there's, a, there's a concept called the broken window approach. Mm. You deal with the smallest crimes. Sure. Like arrest the jaywalking. That's walking around. Jaywalking is a crime in South Africa? I mean, you're just walking, you know. Like, no, I'm saying because are. people don't know. Jaywalking <laughs> is when you're not crossing at the robot. 
it's jaywalking and especially when walking on the freeways as well and uh, that's and a crime yeah you can't walk on the freeway but now with the new art it has changed now sure it has just disappeared but do you remember back in the day you're not allowed to walk on the freeway yeah but now with the art to change i just saw that i asked the guys actually this thing i asked them when we when the guys they were violating the robots the yeah. The like this is a uh, homeless guys and I was like but you cannot arrest them because they're working the freeway. I said, no MMC, the art act doesn't allow that anymore. But before you're not allowed to go on, on, on the freeways, mm. and drinking in public, they're drinking in public. This guy like just right there, and he said arrest this guy, but said no, you can't, uh, because Seb loses those as the as the small offenses. But I think that maybe a scope of JMPD and maybe Metropolis must be really increase the beat maybe yeah. we're able to detain the people able to process all of that with there are uh small claims like you know this mini municipal courts sure. where we can prosecute on all of that i think that um here in johannesburg it actually collapsed and i don't know why and yeah. look there were quite a lot of issues on it but now it's starting to come back now again and we are able to prosecute uh, those you know fines and also, these jaywalking and all these uh, drinking, you know, yeah. drinking and uh, in public and all of that. So, yeah, so that, that, that's it. So, uh, it, it is like that. And we can't even have intelligence. We rely on SERPs on intelligence. Yeah. You see? Um, but ours, uh, we are using the, the patrollers. Mm. Yeah, but ours even personally to really move into reacting like on the, on the GBV mm. to be able to report, you know, GBV as well. So, uh, we 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 sort of set set up in in each regional offices of the JMPD. We establish those people. But the problem is that you can arrest someone, but it always depends on steps to process those people. But our GPV approach is to able that people when they they there's a cry, uh, so the GPP happen, happening, yeah. we're able to be the first respondents at least, sure. and check that, and then take those people and go to the hospital and go to SEPs with them. Say yeah. like, you need to open this case and prosecute it because we've been there. I think the problem that SEPs is having is the issue of uh, manpower and also cars. But we've got those in James. Very sad. Yeah, we've, we've got those in James. Very sad, that thing of cars. That yeah. a crime is happening, you call SEPs, they're like, we don't have a car. Have a car. There's a crime happening. There's someone bleeding, there's someone being beaten yeah. up. I know. Hey, Baba, so that's not more too. I know. I know. It's one of the things I'm, I'm thinking that if, if, if the intergovernment, if we can work together, because remember, it, yeah, the EFF said, for the sake of service delivery, mm. let's work together. Sure. I'm not going to come with Marxist Leninism and ideology and all of that. Sure. And, and, and all of that, you know, let's say, let's give our people. Let, let, let's protect our people. Mm. I've got the, you know, the, you know, the, these resources. I've got cars. Um, I've got manpower, you know. Um, I've got uh, what you call. I've got cameras. That's why the premier doesn't have to launch the cameras. Just say, Chwaku, we're going to use your cameras. Mm. We're going to invest on it as well, but mm. make sure that we are sitting there as well. We've got. I said, premier, we've got cars. We've got people manpower, but we still need more. Sure. Just make budget available. Mm. This crime, you know, a prevention of yours. If you could have came to me and said, look, this is an idea, and we're going to give you probably a thousand or something. Mm. How are you going, how are you able to work with these guys? Sure. And I tell them that, look, I can use, I can train this tram, crime prevention uh, uh, wardens of yours to be- These are Panyaza, the Sufis Mapanyaza. people. Yeah. We're able to properly select them. There's a selection process, number two. Yeah. You are able to train them. Yeah, well, train them on, on a tribe band, sure. proper. And then maybe you can even able to unleash them after a three months. So that they are able to stop the traffic, yeah. they are able to effect bylaws. Yeah. It's all about asking the people who are there because I would have actually guided him, instead of the premier, you know, went into a a problem of not knowing where to locate these people. Yeah. Are they peace officers? Are they traffic wardens? If we could have conducted just a simple phone call, sure. Do you want them to be peace officers? You just arrest there and they don't have to. They don't have powers to do ABC. And I would have mm. told him because I've learned that for you know for some time now mm. and I know what we can do and what and then I ensure that in the academy that the gym because they were trained in our academy by the way okay yes for okay. like you know as peace officers sure. but I could have said no you know premier these people you need to take them step further for another three months mm. so that they're able to do a b c and d and then if now you want them to combat crime because you want it to be traffic warden it's going to take a bit of time yeah 
But yes, we can take them through maybe for a year because the RMTC now is that if you want to become an, an officer, you must take almost a year. Uh, it was it was two years before. Now mm-hmm. they're expanding it to three years. But now they've given us this grace period this year to be a, a proper officer which can combat crime, fight by law, enforce traffic. Mm-hmm. They call it tri band. You must go for two years sure. normally. But now they said because they are ch- phasing it out to a three-year period, mm-hmm. They are, they're going to give us only one year. I could have advised the premier and said, okay, th- you can do that, but I have a problem with manpower in the bylaw. Mm. Let us do that. But for, for crime, what we can do is that we've got about 6,000 officers which are on a four-day in, four-day out shift. Okay? So in other words, out of the 6,000 divided by four, what's that? I don't know. You're the chemical engineer here. Do the maths. About 1,000, 1,003, somewhere around there. Sure. 1, 2, 3, 3, that, 6, 9, yeah, 12. 1,003, somewhere around there. We've got calculators right. here. So divided by 4. Divided by 4. Yeah, well, so you'll have... 1.5. Yeah, so about yeah, 1.5. 1, 1. So you're looking about that. So in, in, in Gaute, in Johannesburg alone, we've got 1,500 officers. That you have to divide that get by seven regions. That will you'll find them in seven regions, okay? Now, I, let's say if I want more, I must put in standby allowance mm. over time. Mm. Then we put them over time. He said, Premier, we want to combat crime for the next three years. Let's put an overtime amount of so much. And let's agree that you, let's get 3,000 officers out. I've got cars. We've got a contract for the cars, which is, we are releasing cars now. Maybe you might have seen these new BMWs from JMP, did fuel mm. patrol. Yeah. And other new cars, yes, we're releasing cars. And I said, okay, we're going to, we have no, we have no problem with cars. 3,000 guys, police visibility is there. Yeah. We are combating crime and then train some other guys to be tactical. Let's get, you know, some of the, of the JMPD guys, they don't have guns. They don't have guns. Still some of the guys guns. we see in the streets. They have guns. They're just there to blow in Pempe. No, it, 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 the problem is... Uh, you know, we're actually fighting there. The, the contract for the guns had been stagnant, has been up and down, up and down for a very long time. And then now, it's only now that I can see there's a light said, okay, you know, we are able to purchase rifles, you know, guns for these people. And some of them I understand because when I, when I went in and asked them, but why are you not fighting crime? Why are you not being visible at night? Why are you not visible? I said, but MMC, we're going to the hot area, into the sure. hot spot. How am I going Don't to defend guns. myself? Fr- from what you're saying, it almost sounds like a big part of what's throttling the amazing work you want to do mm. comes from provincial level. Not necessarily that they're fighting, yeah. but just the needing budget and allowance and in certain acts, about our tour, et cetera, that might constrain certain things no, from happening. No, 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 not really. The province has got its own mandate. I've got my own mandate. Sure. I'm just saying that we could, if we would have found a way to work together. Sure. I think we could have just we have got achieved quite a lot, and I understand that it's the politic. You know, it is a election uh, uh, yeah. uh, period. You yeah. know, I I believe that we could have um, uh, worked very well. I have a good relationship with the uh, MEC Faith uh, Masibuko, yeah, and uh, with the Premier, I have no issues. Uh, sure. I mean, we'll have differences in terms of how we are approaching things. It's yeah. not personal. Yeah, and then also, you know, we're saying that. Amapanyaza, what when we get into power, we just have to check how are they recruited, sure. and then, and then, and then after that, you know, we, we must we must be sure what these people are the people who are supposed to are qualifying yeah. to be there. You know, not being mean, but you must ensure that when you're recruiting people, it's people of quality, yeah. and the people are recruited, you know, like we you know properly, yeah. you know. So working with the province, it it has been sort of like big difficult. We did have our own run-ins, for example. We've got ambulances, about 50 ambulances that are sitting there collecting dust. The province doesn't want to give me a license to operate. Why? Yeah, ask them. They say that I can, I can get it in, in things. I can get, we can, we, we, we were read in terms of our books to, you know, because we must comply you know, mm. and, and be audited and all of that. So my, my guys in the EMS, they said they are ready to apply, but it's taking too long. Okay. How many how many cameras did you say we have? Cameras. Yeah, the cameras for uh, surveillance. Because I was still I was still asking about eight thousand. 
8,000. Yeah, 8,000, including the ones of, of the city. Because remember, we have our own one, 575 for the city. Sure, of which half you said we're and not then working. And then the 7.5. 7.5 coming from Vumake. Um, are we trying to turn Johannesburg into a surveillance state? Is that not a violation of privacy? Is, is that above board? Should we not be worried just as ordinary citizens? I know it's for crime prevention, mm. but you know people sometimes feel funny around, so there are cameras constantly watching me. No, like, I mean, if you are outside in a, in a public space, okay. yeah, I think, I mean, you are able to do that. But what we are, now the guys are looking at is because of the popular Act, yeah. uh, keeping people's information, using it and all of that. So yeah. that is a tricky part about it because we want to be able to have a database of criminals and all sex offenders and sure. all these people. So that now if the people of interest are lending in or tambo, sure. they are entering the, you know, the the boundary of Johannesburg yeah. are able to that 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 that, that intelligent camera the PTZ with AI with picks AI, up AI, facial recognition facial recognition they are there in China about follow one down correct up, yeah they follow you they like know that. exactly who you are yeah they go they, 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 in the in, 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 in the in the in the control room it just it sends out a warning that uh, a person of interest has been spotted yeah. landing and you know entering yeah. Uh, when certain vicinity where those cameras are, sure. then they will start following him because those cameras they will talk to each other. That's it, that's it the plan in Joburg as well. Yeah, and the ones of uh, Markham can can do that. Sure. Yeah, because the functionality. Yeah, there. functionality is oh, it's nice. My, it's nice. It's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. You know, and then and then when you look in, into oh, like, when the guys are theorizing, you no, know, this thing is there, man. Just put the put put this yeah, let let let's put it in. And then they've got another software. It's called like I mean we're in a, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a pilot phase now. It's called Aura. Yeah. So Aura, what it does that it shows uh, where the the JMPT cars are. <laughs> <laughs> it shows exactly where the JMPT cars are. Why, so why are you laughing? No. <laughs> Sorry, please carry on. I know, you know why you're laughing. Why? Please carry on. <laughs> so it tells where the JMPT cars are, sure. and then also when you are watching events or there's in a warning um, uh, in on the screen in terms of the people of or the person of interest sure. or if there's a stolen vehicle, then you are able to look at the cars which are around the area because that talks to the aura, say that this is happening here. Sure. And then it says, then you can see which car is around the it's area. around the area. And then you click, when you click, they send the signal into the to car. To the car. Hey, chief, check. And then it gives the location to go and deal with that. You can't so, say, no, Baba. It's like, hey, Baba, we know exactly yeah. where you are. And then... When we're not using your phone, we give you a device that's not gonna uh, that's fully charged sure. in the car. You're not gonna say that the petrol is finished. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not, not gonna get a chance to go through all these questions. I realize it's a good thing. Um, yeah. Do coalitions work? Why, why does Joburg? It's unfair for me to ask you, but since yeah. you sit yeah. at that at that level, wh why do we keep getting mayors that look like puppet front mm. mayors for certain political agendas? Do coalitions work, in your opinion? I mean, and, and he has the puppet made. That's what I was saying. That yeah, I I think people have their own way of approaching things. Yeah. I think that uh, the mayor there is got he's 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 a man of his own. That's how he. No, is. no, no. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's well, not about the man there. Yeah. So no, I, I know say, a lot of yeah. people are. Yeah. A lot of people in the media have whatever. Yeah. When I say puppet in this context, yeah. uh, all respect to the mayor, it's the idea that. The mayor comes from a political party that is a serious minority. Mm. And it almost looks like because the coalitions are at some kind of a deadlock or there's mm. issues, let's send this guy because maybe he's not that influential or he will listen to whatever we're saying because we're allowing him to mm. stand there. He's not maybe an EFF guy or an NC guy or a DA guy, etc. I think that um, governance is governed by laws. Mm. If something wrong is wrong, you can't get away from that. Okay. Yes, and then that uh, comrade, I can say that here yeah, that the uh, comrade actually chairs meetings very well. Okay, he's got one thing that I mean, I can shout, I can do rally things, and mm -hmm. I can do revolutionary work. I can and move the crowds. Yeah, but other people, they, it's not their way of doing things. Sure, he's um, he is able to listen. Yeah, if I have a problem in terms of that, like look, I think that the other department is not giving me what I'm, I want. Yeah, and then he's able to you know to to really call to order sure. and bring all the parties together and say that MMC 12 is not getting what it's supposed to be getting. And then also the CM gets in, for example, I had an issue where 
um, the, the the cars they were they, they were they were grounded because of non-payment. And I say that I'm tired every time I have to you know push and get the cars, in, you know, because of the budget, you know, budget yeah, yeah. constraints, you know. Then you will say that no, Mchwaku, even though other departments are being uh, prioritized. Uh, for example, revenue collecting departments, but public safety is quite quite important mm. because it uh, it must be given budget, it must be supported because if the people they want to go and do bylaw enforcement, they yeah. need JMPD. So you need to. So he's got those <coughs> kind of uh, way of bringing people together, and we're we're going to do that. But we're not in a call with that. You know, we are just taking our own department and then supplementary energy. Tina Sia, we, we know we are implementing the EFF manifesto there. You you're there to work, not so I'm much to, to be work. involved in the politics and of coalitions and politics. things. I said that let us the, the EFF has pronounced that. Let us put all politics aside. Sure. And it's that. And you can ask all the MMCs. Sure. All of them. They when they want support, I give them support. Yeah. If there are any issues, maybe the uh, issues of bylaws and they want to ah, I said, let's go. So, so I think that that actually works. Is that focus in your own department and deliver. Yeah. So man, don't don't come to mine and start, you know, snooping on mine and all of that. <laughs> you know. So, so, you know, we, we we are we are sharing. Yeah. Government departments. Okay. Let's not put in terms of we didn't sign anything with anyone. Okay. We didn't sign. Yeah. One. So it's nice because we mm. must deal with the mandate of his department mm. and execute it. Yeah. Mugrini must not overstep and go, you know, uh, even though sometimes I really want to clean. I really wanted to clean, said, I can do that. But I said, uh, uh, MMC check, square in, hey, man, uh, let's go and clean, man, my brother. Sure. And then say, no, no, chow, go sharp. Then you'll say, M manje, namthanje, city that never sleeps. Mm. So it's his own operation. Yeah. So we combine the operation. Sure. Yeah, man. We're saying that, let us, we, we, we should be doing that. And I think that on the local sphere, their cooperation within it amongst each other's colleagues. Yeah. It has been sort of okay because we respect each other. Yeah. That's the number one. And we execute our mandates of our department. And if there's something in someone's department, we, we say, leader, I need, let's say, for, let's say, a relocation mm. uh, of uh, people from an illegal occupied building. I'll talk to MMC Leach. MMC. There's something we need temporary accommodation, and I'm gonna go to the radio, and I uh, might have to articulate in terms of we need temporary housing and all of that. But how we have a problem with housing like that, like mm. that, you know? But I won't go deeper because it's your space. Sure. You no, know, no, it's fine. Right. So we, we we always respect each other. Sure. There, you know, but no, they were coming from EFF. Those coming from this one. Yeah. Those, you know, we we run our department like that. That's and I, I I see that the priorities of the government of local unity, as they call it, and then yeah. but also I've got. The, the, the commitments of the EFF, which are not far away from what they do, they want in a sure. safer city and fighting crime. Yeah. Uh, using technology, smarter city is using technology and all those things and, you know, and all of that. So in the EFF, we've got a, I, I was like, we have to fight crime. I, like, I think crime is stopping everything. And if you look at the manifesto of the EFF, you will see that um, after the, the jobs, you get jobs, you get load shedding, after the load shedding, I think it's land. No, there's jobs. There's land. There's land. There's jobs. <laughs> then after that is your crime. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's load shedding. Then there's crime because crime is a problem in South sure. Africa. We have to combat it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yes, this working together and sharing department it works when people respect each other, and they have malda militias and all of those kind of things. Abanyamos. But no, Uchuak, we're not going to give him uh, some people, some officials uh, in my department to execute his bylaw. Yeah, what? Well, but I've been getting cooperation from social development, uh, which is Enema Kofela. I've been getting people from, com from, from developmental planning to check if the, pe pe the place is zoned properly. Yeah. So we've been getting those cooperation to do my bylaw because remember, I can't do it alone sometimes. Sure. Yeah, what? Well, so. It works on, on, on that premise, but puppet mayors, if you, <clears throat> if I can make an example with, with the one that we're really having, he's a man of his mind and he respects everyone. Sure. And he's not a person, he's not a loud person, but in terms of Shem and Yamnik, yeah. we are, he can stand his foot and he, he can listen yeah. 
and then he brings the all the stakeholders together sure. and were able to move very nicely. Yeah, bro. We recently in the news had issues refer, resurface of Zamazamas, uh, of people being mugged mm. uh, on the highways. Yeah. Um, I, I be, that falls under your mandate and, yeah. and your thoughts on that and how to combat that. Specifically Amazamazama and also just crime during the day where it's almost arrogant and spitting in the faces of the work that you guys are meant to be doing and how to, to uh, ensure the citizens that work is being done. The well, a, a minor mixed diagnosis in terms of what happened there in the freeway. Okay. Uh, of course, Amazamazama, they have a capability of doing that because in Amatole, when it's dry, there is no soil rich in minerals. They will go and uh, collect money from people. They will raid houses and rob people. That's what they will do. Because they're finding nothing term. underneath there. Underneath there, so yes. So they decide they to just go to straight crime. Straight crime, yes. And others, they will have, what's that thing called? An extortion. Okay. And, and kidnap uh, and kidnap someone they will this is happening here in Joburg Amato Matol yeah they will kidnap uh, while we're having a meeting there I was in March, March when I just arrived so I was having public con- uh, the 2023 public yeah and while I was having a public meeting then Amatole, they tell about Zamazama and all these people staying in the mountain and they said three women have just been kidnapped now they've been taken to the mountains by the Zamazamas there are the Zamazamas, we must differentiate. There are Zamazamas, the guys who are digging. Yeah. But there are those who are looking after them, the, the security of those Zamazamas. And it's a gang. Almost a supervisor, boss, no, a, p- a pimp. No, it's like, it's like they ask these guys to look after them because uh, before you used to have that, that yellow, the guys with the yellow blanket before. Okay. And then the the guy passed on. He did not put a lead. Now you have emergence of two of them, the yellow and the blue gang. Mm. That they watching over Zamazam. Sure. And then in the mix, you, you put in the other ones again. There's another group. Mm. Okay. So when the guys you, have you done... Underst- you understand these dynamics? Yeah. What I was there... I, you, you see, you, you need to go to the root cause and sure. say what causes all this thing. So the guys will go underground, they will dig the soil, and when they come up, because that, that soil is rich with gold. Mm. They need to penduga it. Sure. Now you will have people there waiting for you, like uh, people who are going to rob you. So they need protection. Mm. That's why they ask these guys, the gangs. Sure to watch over them. Now, these gangs, other ones would, hey, there are people, they normally come out on Thursdays, out. But from the other time, from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, underground. There is a whole world underground. There's spider shops and and everything. I said to the friend of mine who's a mining engineer, and he was explaining that guys sit there for, for months. Yes, for months and months. It sounds scary and it sounds unbelievable. Yeah, that's all I call. There's Human a, beings sleeping, living there's, there's underground. A there's a new world. There's there. shops. Yes, there's shops. And and the mine, the, 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 the mining companies, people who are go underground and doing the normal mining, yeah. mining they pass some of them. They just keep quiet. Pass and just dig. It was dangerous. They will shoot you. They will kill you and bury you there. Hmm. Just pass. They mine with them. And but they go the other direction. So you were speaking about the misdiagnosis of what happened on the freeway. So in the freeway ne, is that uh, Are you explaining that sometimes guys end up going to normal crime because so, they're finding nothing? Yes, what happened there is that when we're explaining it and in, in, in the in the morning said, look, of course there is a Zamazama that is being that's happening fifty meters away. Sure. Fine. And it, it sometimes it's a those guys they will come in and and we've seen that in an area where there are Zamazamas, the guys they will come in and they will rob people on the freeway, especially in Moy. Yeah, when when off ramp M two Moy sure. and held their back. Sure. Those off ramp there in the top. We've been seeing a lot of robots. On your way there. to City Deep. Yes. That area there. So uh, uh, the another 
the director, the DD, the deputy director, said to me, no, MMC gave me a call. He said, no, the time I was in the freeway patrol, something like that happened before. So it looks as if now this syndicate has come back again because of the traffic jams and not having a stationary vehicles in all these, uh, you know, interchanges and all of that. Not just city deep, also to Wemapen. Yes. Imoy, it's filthy, yeah, well, it's yes. filthy underneath that bridge. Yes. Because that, that bridge links Moy to Absa. Because mm. I used to work at Absa, and I, I remember people being mugged yeah, yeah. underneath there as well. And underneath that as yeah. well. So, 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 they said, no, you will have a getaway car in the freeway underneath. And then the guys, they will wait up until uh, late, like when there's a traffic. Sure. Then they will rob people. And he said to me that it looks as if the guys are, are back again. And before, what they used to do in that junction sure. where it splits, there used to be a stationary car. If you look, if you remember back in the days, when you're traveling car N1, N1, N1 from, you know, N1 Grasmere, back in sure. the days, you will go and then... When it off ramps to M1, before it continues, sure. M1 Pretoria, there was always a car there. There was always a, J, a, a JMPD there. Sure. So they used to put in all these interchanges. They will put stationary vehicle cars there, especially yeah. from 4 o'clock, uh, 3, 4, late. Traffic time. Traffic time, so that they can uh, uh, mend them up. So he said, that that's what they used to observe. And uh, it was a syndicate that happened, and then it died off. So, and then, yeah, there were different priorities here. So... I, I ordered that we must go back and roll back to that same plan again sure. in all the off ramps. This uh, is something that's going to happen now. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, they've they 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 they've been putting cars now on those off ramps. Look, uh, when we came in, we, our wish was that we did pronounce that in each and every off ramp there must be a car, a mm. JMPD car. Every off ramp there sure. must be a car. But I mean, with the cars that are you know they're coming out very slowly. But now. If you look at the M1, you've been seeing a lot of freeway patrol. Don't mm -hmm. say you did not. You've been seeing a lot of BMWs up and down, and all, especially on the N1. I said, please prioritize N1 and M1 sure. because of N1 cash in transit that is happening. They were embarrassed there, and then they said that, you know, the cash in transit was happening, and there was no law enforcement that mm -hmm. could detect that. So there was a unit called freeway patrol that's there. So we are mending up as, as the cars are coming out. So we hope that we will be able to make all those uh, uh, things, every off ramp in, in M1 and N1. Sure. And the interchanges, there must be poly, uh, the, this, this cars there. And then also at the entrance, at the border of Johannesburg, sure. we must have, we must mend them up, those people. So that, that, that's what's happening is that is the traffic jam, and these guys, it looks like they are back now. The, the reality outside of the work you're doing is that there, there might be some corrupt police who alert certain criminals about, look, we don't put cars there anymore. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about sure. that. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not really happy. Because those are sure. some of the things I think, look, yeah. outside of the work you're doing, <laughs> mm. just citizen to citizen. Yeah. Those are some of the things we need to consider as well at times. Even things like traffic. Mm. Um, how do we ease traffic so that we're not creating risky spaces mm. um the conversation you were having about uh, jaywalking mm. why are there so many people now crossing highways because another issue we have is people being hit by cars things yeah. that are avoidable and how do we resolve some of you those know, things you know i just discovered something um when when i was when i was driving along winnie mandela yeah winnie Man, winnie the Man old Winnie Mandela. the old william nickel yes yeah. in that big interchange n1 N1, and sure. then it off-ramps. to You know, there are those vagrants there. Sometimes you see them controlling the, the traffic. Sure. For some reason, and I was just driving there, they were not, it was on Sunday. And I know that because I always sometimes go there and, and, and talk to those police, and I always patrol it and check if everything is fine. Sure. So that's where you find those homeless people directing traffic. Yeah. And then, boom, I'm seeing them, 20 of them, in that interchange. I'm like, huh? But this thing was working most yesterday. Yeah. And luckily, I know, but they when they saw that this, this police, they, they ran away. For, luckily, a guy who, who sells sweets there sure. and watch those guys who are selling yeah. genuinely, they came to me and said, thank you, MMC. You know, let me tell you what's happening here. Maybe people are, are taking this thing very lightly and think that, no, these guys are very nice. And it's, 
He said, no, the people who are cutting these robots is these guys. The same guys. So that they can make they collection can make money, money from moving yeah. traffic. Yeah. They can make money. That guy showed me that these ones, yeah, he was fighting with them. And he showed me a hole where there's a, there, there's a, there's a traffic, there's a, there's a, um, there's a, what Traffic call light? It? No, there's a traffic light. There's a, there's a box there. Okay. Underground where you can open it up. Sure. And then you can fix the cable and all of that. So they go there and cut that, that, that cable. So that they so can that manage they light, traffic? Yes. And make money? And make money. And the community and our people are giving them money about that. So, so they said to me, no, these guys, they're doing that. No, it's not load shedding. Sometimes they don't load shedding. Sure. Yeah. And he said to me, no, the people of GRA came and switched on the, 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 the traffic lights. And this guy, they came here like I was 6, 7 in the morning. They were busy, you know, messing it up. I wanted to ask earlier, this was more a personal thing when you speak about bylaws. Yeah. Labo mama, laba that are there with children at traffic yeah. lights is something yeah. that really bugs me. Even some of these guys, we, we call them amapara. <laughs> my parasite. Yeah. Is is begging aloud? Is begging aloud standing at robots? Because I'm a man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very comfortable in myself. But I always imagine, especially at certain hours, yeah. dusk, evening, a woman on by herself with a guy coming to yeah. knock on her window and how she feels unsafe. Mm. We're not saying the guy is dangerous, but just mm. that feeling of public safety. Mm. Is that allowed? Begging, <laughs> Nabo Mama at the robots. Or is that one of the bylaws that's being violated? No, that uh, thing, the, the, the city told me about that. They, they tried to get people out, to go and take them to the shelters. Uh, social development came in, and even the guys was, were, were sleeping under. The bridges? The bridges. But it's their right. It's their right? Their right. To sleep under a bridge and to beg at a traffic light? Yeah, right. If they want to do it, they can do it. So the biggest issue we have there, because you raised something very, very because important. Once you start doing that, NGOs, they're, they're going to be ah, on top of you. So the NGOs are more powerful. The like, part of, part of the, pro to, part of the problem... I don't want to fight with them. Sure, sure. I don't want to fight with them. Even even a like commission, that's yeah. what I, I, I said, even with Siri. That we need to work together and look at the reality. Correct. The reality is that the... The guys and what what happens? What we've seen that some of these vagrants, they would destroy these uh, the traffic lights. Then there's a traffic jam. Then it's dark. Then smash and grab happens. Where do we do? Where do I draw the line? And I said that social development. They said we've got shelters. Come here. You need to wash. You need to be sober. And and and. But mm -hmm. they don't want to come. They choose. Uh, you know, they, they choose to to sleep on the streets. They choose. It's more lucrative. Whatever. You know, they choose. It's I mean, more lucrative. Often. Well, according to 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 them, I mean, some of them are they do this. You know, the waste picking. Sure. Waste pickers, and they don't have anywhere to really sleep. Yeah. And but the the shelters have rules. You need to wake up. You need to wash. And you need to sleep. And by ten o'clock, you need to close. Yeah. So we need to come with all the angels said, guys, we have a shelter for these guys. Please, by this time, they must all go into this area. Yeah. And then we say that this is an observation in terms of the crime analysis. The people, you know, we found that, you know, it has been shown, seen that, look, the guys underneath and... Um, you know, the bridges and all of that, you know, sometimes they, they will do the crime. You can't walk past stuff. now. You can't, you know. And I know because I used to be in the warehouse of the, of the EFF in, in City Deep. Mm. The air was very, very, it was very hectic. At mm. night, you could not just walk because there were Zamazamas and also there were like homeless people who were sleeping around that area. Sure. So at the city, I asked, it, they, they can be given shelters. It's okay. We said shelters and warm meal because you don't want to really... Uh, you know, take people and then you don't do anything. Sure. You know, and, but uh, I got to know freedom of movement is enshrined in, in the constitution. I got nothing I can do. They were taken to court. Other people, we take them, we put them in the shelter. I think the city was taken to, to court. Yeah. And then boom. Even with the, with the, what, with the hawkers. The hawkers, uh, our people need to, uh, you know, we grew up. Yeah. Oh, mama bed, oh, coco bed. They were sending, we grew up. Correct. With that. 
But what we say that uh, the city established that these are the areas that are, the, the hawkering can happen. Sure. And 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 so um, we need to enforce that and ensure that so that the other areas were able to clean. You know. So now we we really can't because number one there's a you know um, okay there's a court in interdict uh, for now to to say to the city let us ensure that there is a way we regulated the permit because the permit was able to be reproducible. And then also, uh, Umvin can have the permit and I, I sublet it. Mm. You know, those kind of things. So that is what's happening with the, you can see the whole current that's happening there. If you compare Bramfontein and you compare the CBD, yeah, Bramfontein is a bit cleaner. Sure. Yeah, so there, they've uh, it's in a different zone. You know, in a zone where JMP was able to clean and all those kind of stuff like that. But now... When they were going on the other zone there in town, then they, they then you know, we had NGOs coming in and interdicting in court, and then they even went to the constitutional court. But it's fine. The constitutional court said that you must go back and ensure that your permit is able to be regulated properly. Yeah. Uh, there must be a system in place so that we know who is hawkering where. And there are spaces sure. that have been allocated for mom. I think... When that's done, then you can get a cleaning of the city proper. You guys as our political representatives need to help us as citizens because mm. I know you guys are constrained in various ways, why, whether yeah. by the business community yeah. and in this instance, NGOs. Mm. You guys are, are going to need to give us ammunition to understand exactly what's going on mm. because some of these things really do affect us. I want to make one last point about the traffic lights mm. and link it to what you were saying about the controlling of traffic. Yeah. Part of the problem is the fact that we do give beggars money and things, which yeah. almost enables them to keep coming yes, back. exactly. But the, on the other side, like mm. Zamazamas, if we don't, they might end up committing crime, yeah. which becomes a, a, a double-edged sword. I want to read this piece from uh, the Daily Maverick, mm. and this is going to be the last thing we, we discuss. This is from the Daily Maverick. Ref referring to the more than 500, 500, more than 500, hijacked buildings in Johannesburg, 25 to 30 of which belong to the city of Joburg. Mm. Chwaku said the public safety undercover unit is working on finding answers pertaining to these properties. However, he laments that some bylaws have been a stumbling block for the city. Mm. In inverted commas, it can't be that someone hijacks a building, then we have to find alternative accommodation for the people because that is criminality, he reiterated. Mm. He told Daily Maverick there are finance institutions that are part of the hijacking syndicate, as well as bogus lawyers who are paid to ensure the city does not solve the problem. There are a lot of bogus lawyers and we are looking at how they are enabling the hijacking of buildings. We want to know how they're able to get court orders so quickly, even before Christmas Day. What is happening now with the deeds office? Why is it easy to change from one name to another, he questioned. The financial institutions give credit to people to buy buildings. Then after some months, the repayment rate becomes high. And then once you default, they seize it. There's a whole value chain in the syndicate. I'm saying this because I want to show these people that the public safety department is watching them. We are on top of them and soon the information will be made public, he said. More than 500 hijacked buildings in Johannesburg. Some of them owned by the city itself. And you're saying this thing is a syndicate and it involves even people that we may think are respectable people. What's the story with hijacked buildings? Yeah, look, he, as, I'm, as I've articulated there. Yes, well. man. You know, as Mkini yeah. uh, articulates yeah. in the, in the it's Daily it's Maverick. Been, yeah, I was just sharing in terms of what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing and what uh, what are the, the lessons learned uh, in actually the... Look, you, you can't have a situation where people just hijack a, a, a building and then, um, you know, don't pay rates and all of that. Mm. But now, if you go deeper and deeper into it, you'll find that people, yes, indeed, they were paying rent. They were staying there legally. And then, all of a sudden, they're saying that the owner of the building has changed. They, they were not, they, they're not aware of it. Like, and also a management company has changed. They come in and say, well, the management company, as what happened with the other one? There's no proper handover. Hmm. Then people refuse to pay. I mean, now I'm going to refuse to pay good, you know, it was Panuel today, then tomorrow it's Mudrin. Sure. There's no proper handing over. Then sure. people refuse to pay. 
And then we refuse to pay the... This is a hijacked building. Hijack, yeah. So no, the, the slum loads, they, they are not even paying rates. Yeah, no, this point in time is not hijacked. I, I don't know where you can characterize that it is hijacked. Okay. As yet. So I said that yeah, like a person will wake up using all these... Um, it come today, it's Mugdeni Chwaku properties. Then the following day, it changes to someone else. Mm. And the title did the um, changes. Uh, overnight, uh, you know, you don't know. But today, I was owning this this sectional title, or I was owning a building. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not owing it anymore. Hmm. So that's why I was saying that we're not. We need to look in terms of the system. That maybe the system at the deeds office is not temper proof. It's hmm. not uh, temper proof. We must look into it. Sure. And then I said also, can us look in terms of people who are doing evictions. Why they look at if they are getting preferential treatments every time? Like it looks as if there's a lot of court orders which are coming in coming out from a, a, from the same company, from the same law law firm. We need to look into that and just check that, if That's anything. giving eviction orders or that's preventing it, no, eviction no, orders giving, from being... Giving these uh, eviction orders so that they can happen. So people will resist now. They don't pay anything. They don't pay rates. They don't pay electricity. They don't pay anything. And they have rights. And they say, no, I'm not going to pay. And then matter about I'm not moving. Of course, they have rights. And then rights. after that, I, the building starts you know, to, you know, it, it, and then the city it discovered that there's a building which is owing them 14 million and it's it's throwing electricity and lights then hmm. they switch it off then you call that Myamandao now because it's dark the building sure. becomes dark. dark city yeah it's a dark city now then that's where now criminality happens because some of these buildings they don't have any security now hmm. people they can people can rob you and, and, and enter the building and, and hide inside the building sure and 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 then also in this building you can mm. you now you, you get a tabs am rembu yeah gee then when i think say comes into a building and say this floor is mine you're all going to pay rent on oh, me. jerusalem jerusalem again i'm all of you you are paying on me then they give you accounts to pay that amount on yeah well so that, that's what actually happened. Now people are scared. Obviously, they will pay that account. But then mm. when you pay here or else, you will, you know, something will happen to you. Then now the building now becomes now hijacked. You know? Yeah. That's when you call it hijacked. But sometimes you find that it's people who are distrangled. They don't even know who to pay to. Sure. And the building and the municipality comes and switch off the rates and, and, te- and, the, rates and the lights and all of that. Some of the buildings are privately owned. Others are the building of the city. Now, the building for the city, okay, well, even private, is that now when you have to take these people down, out, you need to give them an alternative accommodation. Yes, by law. This happens even with ordinary landlords that are trying to evict yeah, tenants. Yeah. Where if, is this person going if to stay? Na, if na, Aga kokanga, baba. Yeah. yeah, but you must make sure he has a place to stay. But sometimes I, I'm not working. I'm not, I was working before, I'm not working anymore. Yeah, but so I still have to pay in Yamos. Yeah, then uh, according to the Pi Act, you need to provide alternative accommodation. You can't just evict people. You can't. It's, it's, very, it's illegal. There's something wrong with that law, right? Fundamentally. <sighs> I, I understand the human rights aspect of why it's there. But there's something fundamentally wrong because it's almost it almost gives, I don't know if you'd call them delinquents, more rights than people that are trying to do the right thing. You're staying at my house, I'm paying electricity, I'm paying for water. You're unemployed for whatever reason. You came in here as a good person. I still have to pay for those things from my pocket because I can't offer. I must. I have the owners to give you alternative accommodation. <laughs> yeah. yeah and now you've got... Person, yeah. That's now as a normal landlord and you're mm. saying this now from a building perspective. Yeah. Even if you can buy a, a building, then people will occupy it. And then you have to... Have, when, in, if I the, want to evict them, where hours, am I taking them? Yeah, if the 24 hours left, within the next 24 hours, it elapses, then law kicks in. After 24 hours? Things have gone to 24 hours, yeah. The following if someone day. moves into a building that... Yeah. If someone moves into a building and stays there for 24 hours, yeah, you, they are officially a resident. Yeah, and yeah. You if you want to kick them, them out, you must yeah. get them a place to stay. Yeah, you don't know that the Pi Act. Read the Pi Act. Hey, Gumnandi, South Africa. No. <laughs> so You know, um, I've said before, one of the best ways, and maybe... This is not really a shout out to Julius Malema. This is actually more of a shade to him. Mm. That thing of Occupy Land. Yeah, hey, don't go there. No, 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 yeah, you I, go- no, I, I no. No, 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 no. You, you, you can, you can. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not even speaking about that. No I'm, problem. I'm speaking about. I'm, I'm referencing it from. Sure, a, sure. It's easier 
if we're trying to expropriate land mm. as black Africans, mm. it's easier to go and settle illegally on land because then it's difficult to remove you from that land than going through the right channels and saying, we'd like our land back. My forefathers lived here. Mm. It's almost easier to go and occupy. It could have been your family land mm. and to be like, we're not moving. If you want to move us, you must find us other land. So at least one way or another, we will have land at the end of this thing. Land was stolen from us. If I go and settle from a land, that land I'm not taking it from anyone else. It's, it's, it's our land that was actually taken, that was actually stolen from us. They've taken our land, it's very painful of what happened. So I'm gonna throw so a curveball after you. We speak. said we said um, we said to the government, amend this constitution to expropriate the land without compensation. Sure. So that it can be owned by the state. Some it happens everywhere else. Then from there, allocate land to the people. Sure. Uh, the government must do it. It happens with tribal land. The state itself owns land. Sometimes the, the state leases yeah. farm no, no. or Abandu, mining land. Abandu, it, it happens. Um, you cannot have um, as uh, you know, this commodity or something like, you know, Abantu, they must have the land. The, the, the state must be the custodian of the land. And land must be given to the people. And be allocated like that. So we're saying that Guru, no, this one they don't want to listen. We're going to occupy the land. We will okay. see a beautiful land. We're going to occupy it because we don't want to listen. We say that Guru, people they want their land. Because there are many of our brothers and sisters staying in um, in, in, in as, as a backyard the dwellers. Mm. They want land. And I mean, you, when you go and check and people are selling land, where are our people gonna get the land? Our land was stolen from us. And then and and they 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 just woke up and well, enacted. That's called enacting. Eh? But in, now I have a piece of you paper. Shall, yeah, this land now belongs is, to me. Belongs to these uh, minorities. Sure. Yeah. Well, where's your was, title deed? Yeah, title deed. And no, mm -hmm. no one know title Where's your deed title deed? Yeah. No, 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 that means it's deed. not yours. No, no. Must have you. Yeah, no this is the curveball quickly. So you've yeah. got situations where. Whether it is land that was restituted, uh, whether it is land that is tribal, permission to occupy, maybe permission to occupy is, is different. You as um, can you go and you buy 50 hectares of land? Because I'm going back to this thing of hijack buildings. And then other people come in. You are black African. You've worked hard. you like, I want to have land for my family. People come and occupy that land. You can't just chase them off. Look, yeah, look, uh, it, it, the land, look, when... It's a nice the, story when it's people, a white colonial... No, 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 it's not, no, no. But on this side, no, 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 no I'm no, just no, saying, yeah. no, no, I'm it's saying easier that in that land, example. Yeah. But in this one, it's tough now, because it's a black African who yeah. owns this land, and it's black Africans coming to occupy legally. No, you see, you... you that, that's why you, we, the, the, the issue of the land, it is very sensitive. Mm. And then also, when you... When you when you when you are given the land by the by, by the government, you must use it mm. or forfeit it. You believe in that you as well. You must leave. You must. The, the land must be a custody. The the, the 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 government must be the, the custodian of the land. Sure. And then Umutini mm. must be able to say, "I need land to do human settlement." Then obviously there will be a debate about how much land do you want to sure. need. Okay, right? that would be a policy issue, right? And then if you don't use it, forfeit it. Sure. Yeah, one. Use it or lose so it. So use it or lose it. Because other people, you'll find that there are other people, whether black or white, I mean, you probably can have games, or have like big, big, lot, big sure. amount of land. Dino Keng here. Dino Keng, you find that there are people who've been claiming their land there. Mm. And they can't, because now this amount of land is in the game reserve, and people are staying in that in those small shacks, squashed like sardines. That's why they at the center of land distribution, there must be the, the whole state. There is no way in the EFF document said occupy buildings illegal. What's the difference? Don't do that. It's no, land. But what's what's the difference? Oh, yeah. It's a land. You know, no, I'm asking you now. There's a difference between the building and the land. But in the building, the reason I'm there, use it or lose it, it's because I have a job close yeah. by. Oh, so no. I need a place to stay. And in Boni Pili Tifetu, No, you must give people land. So and I was no, like, let me let no, me occupy a little bit. No, those uh, uh, building. what needs to happen is that the... The city must turn them into low-cost housing mm. for the people to be able to do what? To, to live around the area. Sure. So 
the, this issue of Nyamandao is a carelessness that was there within the, the government to able to manage mm. housing because obviously people they don't want to be staying in in the townships very far away because remember the it costs money as well. Yeah, it costs money. This apartheid. Yeah. Could you go? Yep. Um, yeah. So let me see. as a building is that. Sorry, the apartheid spatial planning. The the one point I wanted to make. Uh, no, please, please finish. It's a very small yeah, point, it's, and it's not it's, it's a discussion that, point. So people out of desperation, of course, were again. Sure. And, and and that's why I say that others, you find that they 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 sort of having a job, mm. and we found that in this building, someone others are earning anywhere between six thousand, seven thousand, to about thirty thousand by the way. Mm. So the failure of the government then to do low cost housing is leading to people to really take advantage of these uh, abandoned buildings, sure. public buildings, because you all you pay almost nothing, and sure. others are paying for free, by the way. But when we asked them, they said, no, we would like to pay rent, sure. but this is how much money we can afford. Yeah. So the government must do affordable housing. And I still say that the government, uh, Fanuel, I look at this thing in many, many angles. Correct. I said that, it, you know, once you give me land, don't worry about the... Uh, the housing, I will build my house. Correct. Because it's something that I cherish. I'm working, I do a piece job, I buy a door, I buy I buy a frame, I buy, you know, that that, that I buy piece by piece, and then I do that. Mam Lindo, is this try to push for that? Mm. Would he, let's, let's look at this RTP house thing, mm. and let's, let's maybe in the interim, and with budgetary constraints, give mm. people land. Mm. Some people are just like, just give me land, I'll build my own house. That's it. But part, of, part of the issue with apartheid spatial planning, this is not a discussion point, it's just yeah. a note. Yeah. It is the backbone of the taxi industry. Mm. If you move people closer to work, mm. if you get big corporates, white-owned corporates to pay people fair wages mm. so that they can move closer to work, mm. there's a big industry there that will not be happy. And in trying to decolonize apartheid spatial planning, mm. We we're going to have to need you're going to need to have that conversation as well of once people don't need to taxi from Soe to to Senton, what what's going to happen to to this? How do we migrate this industry to something else where mm. maybe the taxi industry here falls, but it's because they've moved into logistics because people are now farming and now they move produce as an example and have an integrated Look what conversation. They did. Look what they did with the. Riavaya. Mm. You do sort of something like that. And then but but that, that wasn't buy. done friendly, in a friendly yeah, manner. Of course. Yeah, you the tax industry was like, you can't set up buses, must, Baba, without engaging us. You must have a government that is that is applying superior logic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the EFF, you know. Like the what? Well, with, like the EFF. That does what? Has superior logic. Oh, think. I told you. I told you right now, and I'm saying to you, Fanuel, is that it is obvious that when you are developing something new within that space, you ask yourself, what are you going to do with the people who are already operating there? Yeah. The best you can do is to really bring them on board and all of that. There's, there's not, we must change with, with times. You know, yeah. We can't be staying, we can't be on those uh, older, you know, uh, um, stay, you know. Sure. Uh, there, there, there will be opportunities in terms of um, uh, fairing people, sure. you know, internally like that. I mean, I've seen that in uh, China, when I was there, and when I was at the UK, UK, even though you go with an underground train, but you still have to be taken from one point to another. another. And then you bring all these taxi buses into this this uh, state-owned company sure. that will be able to manage all the, these things. I yeah. agree. Yeah, well, so, so, so it's all about sitting down and talking to people. It's about conversations. Correct. And don't say to yourself. I'm doing it maybe for my friend. I want to benefit on this. Said, who are the, the stakeholders here? Yeah. Stakeholders, this is what needs to happen. Yeah. You agree? I've got so much money, but how can we ensure that we are moving now from more of taxi into a, you know, a train, more rail, first world, rail, first world, and all of that logistics yeah. and. I, I, yeah. I had a very lovely chat with a gentleman from Santaco. Uh, I was at a pizza shop and he yeah. came up to me, oh, <laughs> and uh, I started off by yeah. shouting at him about the industry and he's like, look, we're working on, on transformation and we're going to need you guys to, to engage us because we're trying to upgrade what we're trying to do. 
I spoke to him about these exact ideas, taking sure. taxi drivers, taxi owners to first world countries to study God, first yeah. world public transport and, and yes. to come back and be the drivers. Yes. And outside of giving people land, we also need to, I don't know what the right term is, but open up our economy to not be isolated into the major cities only. Mm. South Africa's up for grabs to actually develop mm. for other people so that we're also not bunched up whether it's in a building sure, or whatever sure. the case may be. We must also decentralize our economy. Decentralize is the yes, word, yes. It's a decentralized economy. Correct. We must, uh, like the Eastern Cape, KZN, and all of that, so that Correct. we don't have all of us coming into one area, uh, into that, which, which um, you know, people are talking too much about foreigners and people coming look for work, is that if, if you could also... Uh, um, uh, uh, support, you know, um, they call it the um, the African economy. Support mm. it and ensure that we actually fund it and develop it proper. Many of the our African brothers are not going to come to it. Correct. Say. It's the same. I always say to the guys, uh, my fellow colleagues. Once I'm old, I'm done with the work. I'm going back to the Eastern Cape. Mpuma Kalun. Mpuma Kalun. Because you and I because are economic migrants here. I'm from yes, Newcastle and exactly. KZN. It's, it's, it's the same people like in, yeah. in Zimbabwe. They came here to looking for greener. Just like they us. Have, they have, just have had to pastures. cross the border. You had to cross the border by yeah. a buy a lease and all of that. Now we'll and get the, attacked the, for this, by the, the way. The, 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 that's why with the, with the, we're saying that with the, uh, we need to support the economy of, of Zimbabwe. We need yeah. to stimulate it because we're not working in, in isolation. We need to assist them in all of that. Yeah, so that you have now people not coming there and all of that. I, I would even say to people like, if if let's say you said we're well, open, and, I mean the whole they will be here, the whole Zimbabwe, they will be here and everyone is that, that that's why you always see people after they've done working and we all go back to our areas, home, especially and festive season. Festive season, Bong, you can see me twal or Malaysia, be Yeah. Because people are just there for economic opportunities. Correct. Others are running away because of asylum. They were asylum mm -hmm. seekers and all of that. So if we, that's why I would say that in our manifesto is that, in our funding manifest that we need to develop the African economy yeah. and, and, and support it so that we don't have uh, our brothers coming, the side and sisters coming to in, in South yeah. Africa. And also not, we need to decentralize the economy mm -hmm. of South Africa. It must be centralized in Gauteng alone or Deben or Western Cape, sure. we must decentralize it and create economy everywhere so that, you know, it is the decentralized. Yeah. Any closing comments? Have you said everything? Vote EFF. Yeah, you should. <laughs> we, <laughs> Who are you voting we, for this we, year? <laughs> EFF. <laughs> I'm with EFF 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh, well, <laughs> and we are uh, launching our manifesto on the 2nd of March in mm. Dobsonville. I think this episode dead. will drop after. I apologize yes. in advance for that. Sorry? I think this episode will drop after the 2nd of March. Oh, but at least it? we'll have it on record. Yes. My we apologies. Are, uh, we are... Uh, launching our manifesto and I say to the people you don't know the EFF maybe we need to tell you more about the EFF maybe others we are telling our stories we try by all means we've got open pod we have podcasts there we've got the Twitter handles we've got Facebook accounts we've got YouTube accounts just listen mm. don't listen to answer listen at what we say mm. and then maybe you'll understand us because I don't know what you're looking at. I've, I've been trying to check. I'm a professional myself. Sure. And, and you, you, you need to listen to the message. Maybe you, you're looking at the individual who's speaking. Maybe you, you despise that individual. Lord knows why. Even when the person says that, I can't go to bed whereas my brother is, is, is hungry. Mm. Even when a person said, I am... We are launching this house, Winniman Tigzela house, as a home for everyone, as a home for those who don't have a home, for those who are oppressed, and for those, you know, who are the petrol guards, you know, the, the poor. He said, this is your home. Because when I was uh, in, at my lowest, 
we went and, and sought refuge to Winnie Matigzela Mandela House. And she opened her house. Mm. And I found that to be very powerful and said, this leader, it, I, I think that there's, you know, it, there's a genuine love for the people. Yeah. And if you listen, if you look and read what we're about as the EFF, you will see that there are more people centered, the poor and the working class and the oppressed. All we're saying that the economy of this country must be shared. People must get the land. You need to, as the, as the state must be the custodian of the land. Because once we've got the land, you'll see this economy is going to grow. Industrialized, so the SA, create jobs. I don't know what's happening to the ANC because it looks as if all the industries have died when the ANC took over. You need to industrialize. Mm. You need to create special economic zones mm. in the townships and give people jobs. Yeah, well, so, but the problem is that what I've seen that at the center of them trying to really do this thing is because the question of the land. If they want to build something, but eh, there's someone who owns the land. But eh, eh, what am I going to do? And then it, it, it becomes a legal wrangling that takes too long. I tell you, my, my brother, at the center of everything, you want to unlock the economy of South Africa. Maybe you must read and check. I, I, it took me a long, a while, to mm -hmm. understand the issue of land without being passed in terms of the EFF sure. and land and all of that, read about it mm. and said, what is this thing about the land that the EFF is talking about and all the other organizations are talking about? What is so important about the land? You go to China, China, they said, our land. You go everywhere. In the Bible, go back to Umlaba. Umlaba, wait. Umlaba, Umlaba. That's the promised land. Thing. That's the, that's the Umlaba. That's where everything begins and that's where everything ends. Here in South Africa, you own the land when you are dead. Hmm. When they put you in a hole. That's your land. Hmm. I want land. I, I say that I understand there's a globe moment. We need the land. If you can give me my land, you know, <clears throat> it will be nice. Look, uh, how, how, you, how you, can, you can practicalize this thing. Here is a person who has une shelter yeah let's say an informal settlement a shack what one go born almost when he is drunk what one a amba song ari you know when he talks to you hey chief what's happening ari e kokanga mo sure yeah it's mine correct it's my place even if you go to home at kind yeah yeah because I was now with these global negotiations of my cousins and everything. Mm. And your aunts will listen to you if they know that you've got a home mm. and you've got a land. Sure. The land means that you could, you know, Ignika is tunes. Mm. You are owning something. Yeah. Me brood without the land, these these uh, places you think that you own something, you don't own anything. Sure. Wait till you own the land, you will feel it. You see, once you own the land, Panuel. You are able to do farming if you mm. want. You are able to do whatever you want. You can do a shop, a spada shop if you want. You can, you can, uh, you know, you can build anything you want. You can build the the, the land <laughs> is the center of everything you can think of. Sure. Yeah, you color I I never understood those guys about the land first and all shall follow. Yeah, but follow a piece. Sure. ngogo. Sure. ngogo. When at the at the emergence of the EFF and teaching us about the the importance of land. Mm. That is the, the whole thing. So the land now is being called modified, but the Tata, this, uh, what do you call this thing? Tata did. They, they go and make a, a debt about that thing. They, they, you, know, you, you do a debt against that mm. title deed. Collateral. But yeah, collateral. Yeah, well. So when the state is at the center of land, you don't use it, you lose it. But if you're using for human settlement, then it's okay. You can stay there. Yeah, well. So all the companies who want to come to South Africa, they will be the land will be leased. It is done everywhere in the country. Sorry, everywhere in, in the world. In the world. Hey, there's no problem about hey, you're going to chase off investors. P John. I want, but I, you know, maybe I'm not going to be forever. But give me a lease. You can decide sure. 30 years or 99, whatever, 30 years or something. Sure. Renewable. You can renew those things. But, final, what I want to communicate is that 
never underestimate the issue of the land. And one last thought is that the the issue of load shedding is man made. I must try it. I must try it. That when we get in that government there eh, after 29th May, I'm going to that thing. I'm going to raise it very sharply into their cabinet. We saw it with the rugby world cup. We saw it with the rugby world cup. And on the issue of crime, remember when the EFF had a national uh, shutdown? Mm. You saw what happened. All the security forces were out. The capacity of the state, you saw it. They had guns, they had helicopters, drones everywhere. Everywhere cutting all hot spots. And it was. We saw that. Even. With the load shedding, it's man-made. It can be sorted out. But the problem is that you've got selfish individuals who want to privatize ESCOM. Yeah. They're breaking it down into chunks to give it to their friend. Ramaphosa received lots of money during uh, that conference in Nazareth. Billion plus. Now he has to repay the investors, those people that gave them, that gave him money. Now he's repaying them by giving them our a, a thing is a, the, 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 the state owned enterprises. enterprises. They started with SAA by Ravage, a straight by 51 Rand, I think, is a how pen. much it was sold for. Yeah, and now they are going for ESCO. Sure. From there, they are going for. Um, They've been uh, doing the same with our hubs as well. Yeah, trans, yes, Transnet. Transnet, definitely. I, tell you I now, heard that recently. Now, it can be run, but there's no problem. Sure. That ESCO, I tell you right now. You, you, you do maintenance. How did Sassot survive for all these years? How? I was working there. Maintenance. Mm. Maintenance and also being able, if you have a boiler that needs a certain part, that part, you know that by a certain part in the boiler is going to take, let's say, six months because there's some intricate parts that you have to order for the boilers, I mean, to really function. You ensure that you got spares for those. Yeah. Maintenance is at the center of something happening. If the car is not being serviced proper, you know what happens to the car. Mm. It gets broken. The only thing you can get that place on is to do a proper maintenance, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and they want to put these things off your solar. Now, Germany, we just saw in Germany that the issue of solar and <laughs> there's the solar and uh, wind. Wind, they renewables. Are the, they are rolling back now. To coal. To coal. You saw that. Because, you know, um, you, can't pro you can't produce very stable energy. You can't industrialize a nation. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Currently. Yeah. You can't. With but, renewables. But the EFF is not against in terms of energy mix. Sure. It's not. None whatsoever, but we must be realistic in yeah. terms of what works and what does not work. We mustn't be, uh, these things must not be choked down on us as if we're like stupid and we don't know what, what is going on. Mm. But I tell you right now that the, the, the issue of Lonche, and that's why I'm saying that the ANS sometimes is very heartless. You can't, you can't do that to people and, and, you know, and, and to businesses and give them load shedding and tell them that, no, they've got problems like that. That thing is man-made. And it's wrong. By the way, did you know that but townships had a permanent... We know load shedding in township. You, I think now if you grow up in the townships, electricity above five, six, it used to be overstretched mm. and in me for some time. Load shedding to us when we grow up was normal. Oh, but we know that, yeah, you know, electricity is Sure. It, it is left. Mm. Yeah, well, because... But we knew that if you have, I asked the question, why in town the electricity doesn't go off, but in the township the lights go off, yeah. Well. And then the, the explanation from the guy I got back in the day was that in, in town, the, the cables are underground, but in the township the cables <laughs> are on top, because then that's why we share lightning. We share lightning, the cables, you know, they get lightning and then they, 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 they destroy in it transforms. Sure. Yeah. So that's what are the things that only like having the economic freedom fighters coming into the spaces of, of government who are going to show you the rot that is in there. Mm. And and that people will be able to we are going to push that people can be able to get the land must be expropriated and given to our people. What's Everyone the sign? 
Mklabo wetu. Izwe letu. Izwe letu. Africa. Yeah. Uh, may rest in peace with that. Uh, Robert Mangaliso yeah. Sobukwe. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mtrini. Yeah. Uh, Chwaku. Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate the engagement and I'm looking forward to following up with you on, on some of these matters that really affect ordinary citizens in Johannesburg. Mm. Um, thank you very much for joining us on Dope Conversations. Thank you.